Welcome back everyone to another Potential Realized Athletic Enterprise video. What we have for you today is part three in our three-part series addressing back pain. Uh, part one was a couple of do's and don'ts when it comes to back pain. Part two was in regards to our hip hinge. And now part three is going to be some simple stretches and very basic exercises or movement patterns that we can go through uh, to help to reorganize our body and hopefully alleviate some of the pressure and tension uh, that we all experience in our lower back. So um, again, as always, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any information that will help you reach your potential. Let's go ahead and grab a small hand towel. Let's get the same tool that we used for our hip hinge exercise, and that should be about all we need, and we will go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, so the first exercise that we're gonna cover is called a glute bridge. Now for this exercise, you're gonna be lying on the ground, and flat on your back. And I would recommend getting your small rolled up hand towel um, just so you can place behind your neck for a little bit of added support, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and change the angle of the camera real quick. And we are going to go all the way down here. All right, now, so for our glute bridge, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my towel, okay? Now I'm going to just place the towel right underneath the back of my head so I get a nice amount of support. Now, with this exercise, I want my feet flat on the floor in front of me, knees bent, and I wanna to try to get as much contact with the ground uh, on, with my lower back as possible, okay? So I'm not up here like this where I can slide my hand all the way through my lower back. I'm actively compressing my core so I can't fit my hand under here. I'm trying to make as much contact with the floor as I can. From this position, I'll place my palms on the ground and my feet flat on the ground. I'm going to squeeze my glutes and contract and thrust up with my hips. Hold for one to two seconds, lower slowly, reset, then back up and squeeze. Now, a lot of times we have one glute that is stronger than the other. So you should expect to feel a slight difference between the left glute and the right glute. We wanna make sure that both butt cheeks are working the same amount. So as I go up, I'm actively feeling to try to feel if my left butt cheek wants to work harder than my right, or if my right wants to work harder than my left. So for example, if I can feel my left working harder than my right, I'm gonna actively press that right side in even harder. Now, we don't need to over-exaggerate the movement. So as I go up, I simply finish. I'm not trying to go all the way up here. Okay, that's a little unnecessary. All we need to do is get the right amount of tension and our body should still be in pretty much of a, a straight line. So as I go up, squeeze the glutes, nice straight line with the body, Hands on the floor, down. Up and squeeze, down. Up and squeeze, and down. Now once you progress, or if this movement's a little too easy for you, you can go ahead and elevate one leg. Up and press, and down. Up and press, and down. And then switch legs. Up and press, and down up and press and down so that's going to be our glute bridge now that exercise or movement is designed to get our communication with our glute muscles or our butt cheeks um, to greatly increase we really need to make sure that our glutes are active through a lot of the movements that we do we want to make sure that our glutes and hips are holding that pressure and not our lower back so this is an excellent movement to make sure that your glutes and your butt cheeks are firing as they should be and activating them when you need to activate them. So uh, this is a great exercise. Feel free to start slow, you know, maybe two sets of 10 to 12 reps. And if that's a little too easy for you, go three sets, 15 to 20 repetitions. Um, and then once you become a little bit more advanced with the movement, you can go ahead and just do single leg glute bridges. But this is a phenomenal exercise to really train your body as to what should be working. All right, everyone. So next exercise, we're going to go ahead and use our tool uh, for our hip hinge. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the camera here and take a few steps back. 
Okay, everyone. So what we're looking at here, this next exercise, we're going to combine our hip hinge and our squat. So we're really going to try to give ourselves the opportunity to reinforce uh, this proper movement pattern. So we're going to start the same as last time, okay? Back of my hand facing me, and I'll grab my tool. Now I'll go ahead and put it right behind me, and then I'm going to take the back of my opposite hand, and I'm going to hold that tool in place just like this. So I have it going up and down my spine, and I have it locked into place. Now I'm going to place my feet about hip or shoulder width apart. I'm going to make sure I have my full foot on the ground. From this position, I'm going to squeeze my glutes and stand nice and tall. Now I'm not locking everything out so I can't move. I'm just keeping enough tension so I have good posture. I'm not so relaxed that I get lazy with my body. So enough tension just for good posture. Now with this position, we want to keep the pressure in our glutes. So we're going to hinge back, squat down, maintaining our contact points, back up and squeeze the butt very hard. Hinge back, keeping the pressure and tension in the glutes, down, up and squeeze. So the goal for this movement is to make sure that we maintain our contact point with our tool, as well as keeping the foot entirely contacted with the ground. We don't want to roll our feet to the outside or the inside. We don't want to have our knees squeezing together as we go through the hip hinge. We have to make sure that as we go down to squat, our knees point outwards. We don't want our knees falling inwards, okay? So as we go through this hip hinge and as you place your tool, I want you to make sure that you're squeezing the ground with your feet instead of just being very lazy with your feet. It's very hard to squat if my knees are occupying the space that I want to squat into. So tighten the butt cheeks, squeeze the ground and grab with your feet, and then out with the knees as you go down. So one more time. Put my tool in place, hinge back, squat down. And from the front, so you can see where my knees go. Not here. All right, everyone, so that's going to be our hip hinge paired with our squat. So that's another phenomenal exercise to start to learn how to redistribute the weight through your body, as well as perform the squat with a proper movement pattern. We wanna make sure that our back stays straight, that our feet stay all the way on the ground. We're not rocking back to our heels or forward to our toes. And we make sure that our knees are tracking in the same direction as our toes and not falling inwards or collapsing into the space that we are trying to occupy as we squat. So feel free to take your time with this exercise. This is a difficult movement to start to learn how to understand, especially if we've spent many, many years moving our body in the opposite direction or in the opposite manner. Uh, so take your time with this. Feel free to, again, start at two sets of 10 reps and then work your way up slowly to three sets of 12 to 15 reps, five sets of 20 reps, it's a slow and progressive increase as your body starts to get used to the movement. So uh, always keep in mind, guys, that you're going to get better and better at these things as you progress with them. So don't do it once, discover that it's a little bit difficult for you and then put it to the side as though it's not for you. Anything new is always awkward or confusing or difficult at first. So make sure you give yourself enough time to understand the movement and adapt to it. Uh, these are also exercises that you should be going through every day, especially if you're experiencing back pain. All right, everyone. So for exercise number three, this is a bit of an exercise and a stretch combined into one. Now for this one, you can do on a chair, on a small table or step stool, on a park bench, uh, anything like that. So we're just looking for a low platform to put, uh, place one of our feet on. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the camera and we'll show you the lunging stretch. So let me make sure, perfect. So 
What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on stretching our hip flexor, the front of our hip. Uh, a lot of us have a tendency to uh, be seated for long periods of time. We're either driving, sitting at a desk, or kind of just hanging out at home. Um, and our leg is usually always in this bent position. If we're seated, both of our legs are in this position. And our hip flexors have a tendency to get really, really short and really weak. So what we want to do is we want to take a moment to stretch those out. Uh, and this is one of my favorite ways to do that. So I have a small platform here. Pretty much if I rest my foot on it, my thigh is at uh, parallel with the ground at about 90 degrees. And this is a perfect height for me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place my left leg up on the platform and I'm simply going to stand up tall and push my hips as I bend my leg. So I'm bending my front leg and pushing my hips down into the platform. And as I do this, I'll get lower and lower and lower and I feel a really, really big stretch right on the inside of the leg, okay? So I'll do it with my right leg so you guys can see the left leg. So I'll bend my right knee and I'll push my hips in deeper and deeper and deeper. And what I'm looking for is a big, big stretch right here. So this is the stretching portion of the movement. Keep your shoulders back, chest up high, and push those hips down in. Come up slowly, and then back down into it again. Nice and slow with that stretch. Really feel that long line. Tighten that glute and push the hip in deeper. And then back up again nice and slow. Now the exercise portion of this move is going to come from the support leg or the leg that's up. Now as I'm going in and pressing in and focusing on the stretch here, I also want to make sure that I'm loading the glute or loading the butt cheek on my up leg. So this leg isn't just here for support, it's actively working as well. So as I'm pushing my hips down in, I'm pressing my foot down into the platform to keep tension on the back side of my glute here. Because remember, I want to keep the glute engaged through all movements. So, as I go for my stretch, I'm pushing into the platform and activating my underside here, the glute, by pressing in very hard as I push my hip into the platform. And as I push away, I focus on activating the glute muscle to push away. Dig the heel into the platform and turn on the glute. That way I can make sure I'm not only stretching my hip flexors, but I'm activating and exercising the glute at the same time. This is a phenomenal way to combine an exercise and a stretch that are both geared towards alleviating our back pain. All right, everyone. So now that we got our exercises out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move into a little bit more of just the straight stretching. So we have a stretch called the 90-90 stretch. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, even if you're not familiar with what it's called. Um, so this might be a familiar movement for some of you. We're going to go over some of the fine detail points and make sure that we're just doing the movement correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera again and scoop back a bit. Okay, so we have the 90-90 stretch, and the reason this is called the 90-90 stretch is because both of our legs are gonna be bent at 90 degrees. So I'm gonna start facing the side, and then I'll do it facing forward just so we can get all the particulars out of the way. So 90-90, I want, in this position, my left leg bent at 90 degrees in front of me, and my right leg at 90 degrees off to the side of me. So I have one leg in front, one leg off to the side. So, as you guys can see, I'm in this position, and if I switch to the other side, it's literally just a hinge and a swing of the legs. So, as you guys can see this here, this is the position that I want to start to be in, okay? So, 90-90 position, 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here. Now, what I'm looking at doing <clears throat> is hinging forward here. Now, a lot of people think the goal of this is simply to get as low as they can. Now, a lot of people you will see just simply bending and bending and getting all the way down here. Yes, I feel a bit of a stretch, but that's not, for me, the most effective way to go through it. 
For myself, what I have found most beneficial is to keep the body postured and to focus on hinging in the proper manner. I keep my back straight and I get a very, very big stretch at about this point here. Now, if I release the tension, I can go very, I can go a lot further down. I can go all the way down here, but that's not increasing the stretch. What I wanna do is try to get my belly button to touch the floor. So I reach forward with my belly button rather than with my collarbone, okay? So notice how I'm not rounding the back out. I'm keeping the back up and straight and positioning myself down. Now, as I go through this 90-90 stretch, I like to have my hand either on the side for support or on the knee in front of me. And you'll notice I go directly forward, keeping the chest up, pressing the belly button down to the ankle, not rounding out and getting all the way down here, okay? So the setup for the 90-90, if you're just sitting on the ground, you're gonna take one foot and bring it in front of you like you're gonna go cross-legged. Then just go ahead and prop up on your outside arm, shift your weight, and get this other leg out to the side of you, okay? This is gonna be the setup for our 90-90. Now in this position, I have three directions I can go. Now, as I go through all directions, I wanna make sure that I'm keeping myself postured up and keeping my back straight. Now, the three directions, I can go straight forward over my ankle or over my shin. The second direction, and this one's usually a little bit easier, I'll relax and I'll go over the knee. Notice how I'm keeping my back straight and not rounding my back out just to get as low as I can. I wanna keep myself postured up and think of touching my belly button to my knee. And the third direction is over this foot. So I'm looking at straight, 45 degrees, and 45 degrees. As I go over my foot, I like to place a hand here just to make sure I keep that knee in place, posture up, and hinge forward over that foot. So I'll go ahead and do it from the side again, just so everyone can see. Posture up, good position, forward over the shin. 45 degrees over the knee. And 45 degrees over the foot. Now, as I go to switch to the other side, I'll simply hinge and rotate, and then I will operate on this side. Belly button to the shin, shoulders back, chest high. 45 degrees over the foot, and 45 degrees over the knee. So that's going to be our 90-90 stretch. Now remember guys, with the 90-90, we wanna focus on keeping our shoulders back, our chest up, and our core active. The goal isn't to round yourself out or to get as close to the floor as possible. The goal is to elicit as good of a stretch as possible in the glutes and in the hip area. So make sure that you stay postured up, and as with all movements, give yourself some time to get comfortable and learn the movement Allow your body time to understand what it is that's happening and give yourself, you know, this stretch usually takes some time, uh, especially to find the comfortable resting position if we're excessively tight or if we're working through very, very severe back pain. Uh, just getting into the position can be a little uncomfortable. So give yourself some time with this one and really make sure that you're keeping your posture. That's gonna be the most important thing as you go through your 90-90 stretch. All right, now we have one of my personal favorite stretches. This is called the frog stretch. I really, really enjoy the frog stretch. It is personally one of my all-time favorites. So let's go ahead and get into the frog stretch here. We're going to lower this camera a bit. All right, let me go ahead and scoop back. Now, for the frog stretch, it's almost self-explanatory. 
you're going to be lying down on the ground in the position of a frog. Now, it might sound a little weird, and I'll go ahead and face forward first, and then I'll face the side. With the frog stretch, we want to have the inside of our foot flat on the ground, and also the inside of our knee flat on the ground. So, this way and this way. Okay, so if you notice, I have my flat foot, flat foot. From this position, I place my forearms on the ground and I push back into my hips. Keeping my feet flat on the ground. Now, I don't necessarily need to have my feet all the way out here. The wider my feet get, the more difficult the stretch becomes. So if I bring my feet all the way close together, I can go real far back. I pretty much want to have my foot right behind my knee. So as you guys can see from the side here, I want to have my foot pretty much the flat inside of my foot flat on the ground and it's right behind the knee here. Now again, I'm placing my forearms on the ground, keeping my back straight and pushing myself back into that stretch. I will move forward to alleviate the pressure. I like to incrementally increase the tension, so I'll go out a little bit further, and then I'll push all the way back into that stretch. Take a nice deep breath as you push in. Back up again. Then all the way back. So as you go through the stretch, you should notice a very, very big response right in that groin area. Uh, again, as we sit or as we're constantly, you know, driving or in a sitting position, our legs have a tendency to kind of rotate in and fall inwards all the time. That creates a lot of tension right here in the hip flexor and right here in the groin area. So as we create a little bit more length in those areas, we should notice the pressure in our lower back slowly start to alleviate. So I'm gonna go ahead and face the opposite direction just to give you guys one more angle of the frog stretch. It's a very, very simple stretch. However, you get a very, very big response. So I like to start my frog stretch in this position, okay? I put my hands on the floor in front of me and I place my feet. Flat on the ground, just like this, elbows to the floor, back straight, and push. Getting real, real low. Now I'll move out of the stretch, give myself a little bit of relaxation, widen the feet a bit, and then go back into that stretch. I'm pushing back with my forearms helping myself get deeper and deeper into that stretch and then coming out nice and slow. So this is our frog stretch. Now again, the frog stretch is meant to kind of give you a big, big response right in that groin area. Make sure you have your feet flat on the ground and don't overly round your back. As you go through this frog stretch, you don't want to be here Try to flatten that back out, and as soon as you flatten the back out, you should notice a very big stretch right in that groin area. Use the forearms to push yourself deeper and deeper into that stretch, keeping the back straight, and then allow yourself to come out of the stretch momentarily, and then back into that stretch again. Okay, and this will work wonders for your groin area and really start to alleviate some of the pressure that we experience uh, in our lower back. Okay, so we have a, another stretch and we need the floor and the wall for this stretch. So um, you might also want your towel just to place under your neck um, and maybe another small hand towel to place under the small of your back just for additional support. So maybe one or two small hand towels and we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm actually going to sit as close as I can to the wall for the setup on this one, okay? so. 
The goal for this is to be lying on your back with your legs elevated and then one leg to the side, the other leg to the side and both legs to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself into position and then I'll continue to talk. Just try to stay, uh, try to follow along with me here. So for this one, I wanna be seated all the way up against the wall. This is the easiest way that I've found to get into the position for this movement. So as I'm here, I have my right side on the wall. I'll take my left elbow and I'll place it on the ground. And then I'll just kind of swivel here to where I have one leg going up, the other leg going up. Now, this is where you might want your hand towel. I'm gonna to take my towel here. I'm gonna place it under my neck just so I have good support. You might also wanna take another towel and place it under the small of your back so you have a little bit of support here as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take uh, mine right under the head here. Now, what the goal is for this position is simply this, allow myself to be in this position where all of the pressure is taking off of my lower back and I get to put my feet and my knees in a position to be elevated above heart level and this will allow them to start to drain. Um, this is a very, very good position simply to alleviate the pressure on the lower back I like to lay in this position for about five to eight minutes. After five to eight minutes, I'll take one leg and allow it to just fall off to the side here. Now I just let that leg sit there and I have a nice big stretch right here in the groin area and I'll hold this position for about another five minutes. After I do that, I'll assist this leg back up and I'll let my other leg go off to the side. Just let it relax and hold this position for another five to eight minutes. And then I'll assist this leg back up. And then I'll let both legs go at the same time. And I'll hold this position for about five to eight minutes. As I'm in this position, I feel a very, very big stretch. So I'm just holding this position and letting everything relax and stretch. After my five to eight minutes, I will slowly and gently bring everything back to the top. I will slide my feet down and I will roll out of the position. Okay, so a couple of pointers and tips. Make sure you have your back flat on the floor. Uh, start with maybe 90 seconds to two minutes, maybe three minutes at the most per position. If you lay in it and you've never done this before, you lay in each position for eight minutes, you will be very, very tender and very, very sore. So I recommend starting off slowly, maybe 90 seconds to two minutes per position. You have four positions, straight up and down, one leg off to the side, other leg off to the side, both legs spread. Okay, so four positions total, about 90 seconds to two minutes per position. And this will not only give you the ability to drain your feet and knees, which allows for better circulation and less pressure, um, but you will start to get a very, very good stretch in your groin as you go through this, um, this movement pattern. Uh, and it also, that position takes all of the pressure off of your lower back. If you think of sitting or standing, you always have gravity pressing down into that lower back region. When we support the lower back with the floor and bring the legs up, our back is in a completely rested position. So that's gonna be a very, very good position to allow our back to relax, and then to allow our lower body to really stretch and go through its best range of motion possible. So uh, this is a phenomenal stretch and exercise. For me, the most awkward part of this movement is learning the setup. So you gotta get real, real close to the, to the wall here, kind of roll back, and then go one leg at a time as you twist and rotate. Okay, then roll out of the position. Now, if you feel tension in your back, it might be because you're too close to the wall with your butt. I don't need to have the underside of my butt touching the wall. I can be, you know, maybe three inches, six inches away from the wall with my backside, but I still need to get as close as I can with that, the, the butt and the tailbone to the wall. Uh, but it doesn't have to be flush. So just a couple of key pointers and tips to go through or to keep in mind as you go through this movement. Um, this is a really, really good one for alleviating pressure and then getting a real, real good stretch in that groin. All right, everyone. So that was part three of our three-part series on how to handle and address our back pain. 
I really, really hope that these stretches helped. What I'd like for you guys to do is go ahead and hop in the comment section below and let me know what your favorite stretch or exercise was that we covered or which stretch or exercise provided you with the most relief or felt the best to you. Um, as we go through stretches, one of the best things about stretching is not only that it lengthens and strengthens, um, but it feels good. So go ahead and hop in the comment section and let me know what your favorite stretch was or which stretch felt the best to you. Um, as always, guys, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss out on any information that will help you reach your potential. Uh, this concludes our three-part series on back pain and I will have a lot more information coming for you guys soon. Let me know what you'd like me to cover next. Um, I do have a few video ideas in mind, um, but if there's anything that you guys would like as a priority or something that you're maybe dealing with right now that you'd like us to cover, by all means, go ahead and let me know and we'll go ahead and do that for you. So thank you guys as always uh, for tuning in to another Potential Realized Athletic Enterprise video and we're out.